This is Evangelist Tony Abram, and we're coming to you on episode number 17. And yesterday, I shared a little bit about a prayer, praying one for another. Today, we're going to just talk for about five minutes on on the on the scripture found in Romans 8:26 where it tells us there are groanings as sometimes we feel to pray and we know not how to pray as we know or ought to be praying but when we pray in the spirit it's with groanings it seems we don't know what we're praying for and i want to give you an example or ex- or an illustration that happened in my life way back in the summer of 1963. My wife and I, <clears throat> working at that time for T.O. Osborne, preparing his crusades in uh, the UK, uh, the United Kingdom, and we were going to the Owl White, right? I say right, but it's spelled W-R-I-G-H-T. And it's a beautiful little uh, island just south of uh, Southampton or Portsmouth. I believe it's Portsmouth. You know, so many years go by, and and when you've been all over the world in over 125 countries and ministered in, in I guess, thousands of places over the years, uh, sometimes you get a little mixed up on, uh, and I believe it is Portsmouth, but we were, drove there to Portsmouth, and we had to take a ferry. And uh, we were not going to take our car. And so I stopped at Pastor James. He was an elderly pastor there in Portsmouth. And I said to him, I said, Brother James, uh, he was in his garden working. I says, is it all right to park our car here with you while we go to the Owl Right to um, uh, minister. We have uh, some uh, meetings, rallies over there. And would you, uh, would it be all right? Oh, he said, sure, that'd be all right. I think we were going for six days or or 10 days uh, during that time. And so we went to the island and we were having wonderful ministry there going from one church to another, telling them that when the Osborne Crusade would be in Portsmouth, they could come over and spend a couple days and be blessed, and uh, we'd be glad for them to do so. And we were promoting, and the Lord was giving us blessings, a few souls here and there. But one night, while my wife and I, I forget whose home it was, they were giving us hospitality, but I woke up in the middle of the night at three o'clock and I had this tremendous burden in my spirit because well, I had a dream. And the dream was of my brother uh, back in the United States uh, I, that I saw him and uh, he would have been about uh, 19 or 18 or 19 years old at that time. But in the dream, I saw my young brother, my only sibling, my only only brother, and here he was bleeding. He was hemorrhaging at his mouth. And, and I woke up uh, with this burden, and I thought, do I need to pray for my brother Frank, or who should I be praying for? And I got out of bed. I didn't even disturb my wife. And I got out of bed, and I began to pray. And I said, Lord, I don't know to pray for Frank or who I should be praying for. But the burden was upon my heart. And I began to, in the spirit, I was began to pray. And it was like groanings. I mean, it was down in my spirit. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Or has God ever led you to pray for someone that you didn't even uh, know or you may have known? And I didn't know to pray for my brother Frank. Uh, or not, but I began to pray, and and I it wasn't a long time because at about fifteen minutes later, the burden all of a sudden lifted from me, and uh, I just thought, well, praise the Lord, and 
and uh, I just rejoiced in my spirit. I crawled back into bed, and back in those days, I, to get up, I could fall back to sleep, so I fell back to sleep. Well, a few days later, I we came back to uh, Portsmouth to come to get our car, and here was Brother James working out in his garden, and I said, Pastor James, it's good to see you. And he said, oh, yes, Brother Tony. I said, how are you? He said, I'm doing great now. But he said, I had an experience the other night. I said, what was it? He said, you would not believe it, but I was laying in my bed dying. I was hemorrhaging at, in my mouth. Blood was pouring out of me. I said, Doc, Brother James, Pastor James, please tell me uh, what time was this? When was this? because immediately the dream came back to me of my brother bleeding and me getting up and praying. I said, what time was it? He said it was on Wednesday night uh, or morning uh, or Wednesday night. And and at three o'clock in the morning, at three o'clock, he said, yes. He said, yes. He says at three o'clock in the morning, I, I was, blood was pouring out at me. The doctor was there with my wife and and he was shaking his head and he went out into the corridor. And my wife was there crying and he went out in the hallway and I guess to have a cigarette and my wife was, she was so sad, she was crying. He, he, she knew I was dying and and here she couldn't pray. And in my spirit, I cried out. I said, Lord, Lord, let, let, let somebody pray for me. Now, Brother James, he, he went on and told me, he said, and I cried out, someone pray for me. And he said, all of a sudden, I looked at the doorway and I saw Jesus. He, he said, Jesus came in, walked right by my wife, and she didn't, she didn't see him. And I, I was just laying there looking at him, and Jesus looked down at me, and he reached out with his nail-scarred hand and touched my forehead, and immediately the blood pouring out, the hemorrhage stopped, and Jesus disappeared. And he said, I knew I was healed. And I said to my wife, I'm healed. I'm healed. Help me up. I'm healed. And she got so scared, she ran out to the doctor and and told the doctor, he, he's trying to get out of bed. He said, oh, it's the last stages. He, he, he's dying now. Uh, you prepare yourself. They came back in, and he's and here he said, "I was sitting up in bed." And the doctor said, "What are you doing? You're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> Lay down." He said, "No, I'm I'm healed, and I'm hungry." And they couldn't get over it. And he said, "I went downstairs, and that at at four o'clock in the morning, my wife was making me bacon and eggs and fried bread." Oh, and then I told him of my dream that at Wednesday, at the same time, Wednesday night, three o'clock in the morning, I had a dream of my brother. I didn't know I was to pray for Brother James. I didn't know who I should be praying for, but I prayed in the spirit. And Brother James turned to me and said, thank you, Brother Abram. Thank you. You interceded on my behalf. You were obedient as the Spirit of God came upon you in the middle of the night. When you dreamt of your brother, you didn't know who to, who to pray for. But God knew, and you touched the Lord for me. Thank you. So friends, sometimes God can lay a burden on your heart and you don't know how to pray for someone, but the Spirit of God knows, and he knows who's in need, 
and he may lay it on your heart. You may not even know the situation at all, but God knows. And so that's why it's good to be obedient to the Lord. And so that's why Romans tells us that we intercede sometimes with groanings that cannot be uttered. Praise the Lord. And now, in closing, I want to pray for you. Father, there may be some that are struggling, some that are in need, and we send the word in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in the scriptures, God sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from destruction. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And if there's someone there watching either now, in the future, on YouTube later, let me say this, God loves you. And he wants to be a personal savior, not just the God of the heaven somewhere up beyond the skies, but one involved in your life, in your home, in your family, because God loves you, my friend. And today is the day of salvation. Why don't you invite him into your heart? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. For the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now remember, you want more information about this, and I've got hundreds of uh, outlines on our website and archives of God doing wonders. You can go to our website, who Tom McLaughlin from Calgary, my good friend and his wife, Bev, who look after our website, always keeping it updated. And uh, uh, there's Mar some of Marge's songs from the 10 albums that she has recorded over the years. There's a lot of good things on there. But all you, and it's easy to get to, it's just www, of course. Then it's tonyabram.com. Uh, now remember, Tony and Marge, we love you. We really do. But God loves you more.